Hi everyone and welcome to another fly deck to sim tutorial. In today's video I'll be demonstrating the effect cold temperature has on an aircraft's altimeter and how to apply appropriate corrections to an instrument approach to ensure you can fly your next virtual cold weather approach safely. Now we're currently holding overhead in Greenland, we're using live weather and it's currently minus 30 degrees celsius at the airport and we're going to fly the localizer Yankee approach onto runway 09. Now due to the temperature we need to make sure we apply some cold temperature corrections to all the altitudes below the temperature corrected MSA. Before we do that let's talk briefly about the aircraft altimeter. So talking about altimeters, an altimeter is calibrated to show the true altitude under the International Standard Atmosphere or ISA conditions. Now the standard ISA temperature at sea level is 15 degrees celsius. So any deviation from this will result in an incorrect reading on the altimeter. Cold air is also denser than warm air, so when flying at a temperature below standard ISA, the altimeter will indicate a higher altitude than the aircraft's tr true altitude, meaning the aircraft will be lower than the um, altimeter's reading, what they're currently the altimeter is saying. Now at very low temperatures like we're experiencing today, there will be a significant altimetry error, which if not corrected, could potentially lead to controlled flight into terrain. The error also becomes more pronounced the colder the temperature and the higher your true altitude. Now what I'm going to do is reset the Q&H to uh, standard uh, pressure which is 1013 which is also the ISA uh, Q&H setting. So uh, let's set 4400 feet, I'll just select uh, vertical speed and we'll descend to the uh, minimum holding altitude. Uh, at the Stronford NDB which is 4,400 feet on the QNH of 1013. Now because I'm a careless pilot I'm still holding at the charted minimum holding altitude of 4,400 feet but I've not corrected for temperature error. Don't forget the temperature down at uh, Kangla Lusak below us is minus 30 degrees Celsius. Now let's see what happens when I set the weather to ice conditions. That's to say the temperature on the ground is no longer minus 30 it becomes plus 15. So we're now level uh, 4,400 feet at 1013. I'll select clear which uh, sets all the weather to standard ISO conditions. Select change weather. We're at 4,400. Pressing That's change. Cool. Look at that. We've just lost about uh, 800 feet there and the aircraft's automation now is correcting for that. So even though we thought we were at 4,400 feet we were actually our true altitude was actually at 3,600 feet. So you can actually see the dangers of not correcting for cold temperature. So I've just turned live weather back on, reset the correct Q&H, which was 1004, and you could see from, as I've just demonstrated, we're not actually at 4,400 feet, our true altitude's around 3,600 feet, so how do we counteract the effect cold temperature is having on our altimeter? So what we need to do is turn to the aptly named altitude correction table, uh, work out the temperature, which is minus 30, and then we need to apply a correction to our minimum holding altitude, which is 4,400 feet. Now the elevation of Kangalusak is 100 feet, so even though we're 4,400 feet, we're 4,300 feet of the, uh, above the ground. So looking at the altimeter reference source, if we take the 3,000 foot increment, the 1,000 foot increment and the 300 foot increment, we'll add those figures together, that totals a correction of 820 feet. We simply add that to our minimum holding altitude of 4,400 and it comes to 5,300 feet rounded up. So that is the altitude we need to fly to ensure that we're above the actual true altitude of 4,400 feet. So what I'll do uh, is set that now 5,300 feet. We'll select level change and we'll get up to that safe altitude to ensure we're above the minimum we holding go. altitude of 4,400 feet. So now we're safely at 5,300 feet, the new updated minimum holding altitude. We can just uh, show you the temperature corrections I've made on this approach into Kangalusak Localizer Yankee Runway 09. So here's the chart. You can see right at the top right I've changed the MSA. The uh, MDA has been updated to 520 feet. You can see the minimum holding altitude as discussed 5,300 feet. And I've made the modifications in the FMC as well. So starting 
uh, from the NDB outbound you can see it's no longer 3,300 feet above I've changed it to 3,900 that platforms 3,600 which we're going to maintain all the way to the descent point and then I've changed the 4.5 DM to 1,400 feet again previously it was 1,200 so you need to make those modifications in the FMC to ensure VNAV uh, flies the correct profile and altitude. Now unfortunately VNAV in the Zebo mod is a little bit bugged at the moment it also doesn't change the glide path angle based off the temperature corrections we've made so we're going to fly this approach in vertical speed monitoring the altitude distance cross checks which I've temperature corrected and will initially set uh, around a thousand feet per minute and then adjust the vertical speed every mile to ensure that we cross at the correct altitudes and hopefully um, as we get close to the ground we should be pretty much on profile. So that's it, the aircraft's all pretty much set up, ready to go. Uh, landing performance will go outbound uh, after the next hold. Landing weight is going to be around 56 tonnes. We'll put 56 tonnes here, nice long runway. It's not contaminated. Flap 30, order break 1 is set. And I'll meet you on the outbound leg uh, where we can start our descent from the minimum holding altitude of 5,300 feet. So now outbound on the procedure, just got the latest weather conditions, we should be fine. The RVR is above the minimum required, it's around uh, 6,000 metres. We can now step down to our temperature corrected altitude of 3,900 feet. So we'll set that on the MCP, that's set. We'll select level change and we need to maintain that altitude until 17 DME inbound on the uh, final approach. So just uh, turning final now, you can see the localizers alive on this localizer only approach. So we'll arm Vorlock. There we are, localizer alive, localizer capture. Uh, runway heading, we can now set to 088 degrees. We've also leveled off at 3,900 feet. Remember, if we hadn't temperature corrected, we'd be at 3,300 feet. And also considerably lower to any obstacles and terrain. Uh, next thing coming up, uh, we have one mile to go until 17 miles. So we can step down to 3,600 feet, temperature corrected from 3,000 to 100 feet and we'll select vertical speed we and we'll level off and maintain that altitude until the descent point. So now level at 3,600 feet, approaching 10 miles, we'll start slowing down for the approach, so I'll select the up speed, uh, flap 1, in fact we'll go straight to flap 5 and we'll bug the flap 5 speed as well. So we're now at the flat 5 speed, still maintaining 3,600 feet. We have two miles until our descent point of Fox Fox 09, so my operator would say approaching descent. Uh, we'll set the minimums, round it up to the nearest 100 feet, so that's 600 feet. And as we're not flying it in VNAV, we'll verify out hold, and um, we'll use vertical speed and set 1,000 feet uh, per minute uh, once we get to the Fox Fox 09. Uh, there's only one mile to go to that, so we'll just get everything ready for the approach. Uh, Jim, our virtual first officer, he would be giving me out your distance cross checks. You'll also see why I'm not using VNAV. As soon as he passed the Fox Fox 09, he'll jump to the original uh, set path based off no cold temperature corrections there. So 0.4, uh, 0.3 mile to go. We'll get ready to set 1,000 feet per minute. And there we are. There's the descent point, 1,000 feet per minute. There's VNAV jumping, which is why we're not using it. And we can start our descent. Now, the DME is not collated co-located with the runway threshold it'll read 1.6 DME at the threshold nine miles checking the chart then we want to be at uh, 3,380 feet we're going to take flap 10 because there's a slight tailwind and we're slightly uh, below profile there at nine miles so let's just adjust that to 850 feet per minute let's see where we are at uh, where we're going to be at, at at eight miles we need to be at 2,000 970 and these have just been roughly worked out by myself uh, using the cold temperature correction table so eight miles 2970 i'd say we're 
about 70 feet low so again we're doing 160 knots according to the table we want to be doing about a thousand feet per minute so we'll leave it at uh, minus uh, 850 we'll see where we're at at seven miles and then after seven miles we'll start configuring we want to be at 21 uh, to 2520 at seven miles I think that's pretty good on profile we'll leave it as it is let's configure now gear down flap 15 match speed landing checklist our true altitude should be close to what it's meant to be at so start switch is continuous recall check speed brake arm green light landing gear down through green water brake is set to one holding on landing flap at six miles we want to be at around 2100 feet looking good i think we'll leave the rate of centered around 850 on profile let's take flap 30 match speed at five miles we want to be at 1660 looking outside I could just see the runway ahead looking where it should be uh, looking like it's at the right place at uh, five miles then just make sure it's 1660 flaps we've got 30 green light lights are on clear to land checklist is complete so five miles 1700 feet maybe a tad high but looking outside I can see the runway where it needs to be I can't quite see the pappies though not very clear and explain I think we cannot be too far off looking at the picture there. Uh, four miles, we need to be at 12.20. We'll get ready to set the Mr. Pro altitude, which remember is co uh, corrected. We'll put 5,300 feet. It should stay in vertical speed, which it is. Don't know why it increased to 1,000 feet though. Four miles, 1,200 feet, pretty much on profile. I'm going to disconnect now. That's the autopilot. Disconnect the auto throttle. We'll take off the flight directors as well because they're based off uh, localizer and vertical speed. And it looks like we're pretty spot on. We'll keep descending now. Uh, speed's good. Pappies are two reds, two whites. So you can see those cold temperature corrections I made worked out pretty nicely, pretty rough and ready. But VNAV, if it was accurate, would be the preferred mode to use. Looking good. Two reds, two whites. We're still live weather. And tad high now. Three whites. Just keep that rate of descent at around eight, 900 feet per minute. Pappies are also based off the steeper angle. Checked. No more than a thousand feet per minute here, though. Checked. Continue. So just default scenery here at X-Plane 12. Keep it descending now. Speed's good. Rate of descent's good and appropriate. Still a tiny bit high, but there's the profile there. Keep it descending. Check. Close. Hold the attitude. Let it settle down right on the money speed breaks up reverses versus green we'll go to second detent there's a hundred knots 80 knots manual braking and we'll go to idle ladies and gentlemen welcome to Kangar Luswak So we've just vacated runway 09 after flying a non-precision approach with the appropriate temperature corrections. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. As far as I could see, Lamla Research have done a really good job simulating altimetry temperature error and it's really nice to see another realistic element added to the sim. One thing I'd like to point out is that if you actually are flying an RMP approach, make sure you check the chart temperature limits. If it's within limits, you can fly the approach using LNAV and VNAV, and you then cold temperature all altitudes except the altitudes from the final approach fix to the missed approach points. They could be left in the FMC, and they don't need to be corrected. That's because the final approach path, vertical angle, uh, and the obstacle clearance is safeguarded against the effects of low temperature by design of the approach. Now if the temperature is below the chart temperature limit, you can still fly the RMP approach, but you have to use LNAV minima only, and you then temperature correct every altitude below the MSA, just like we did on the localizer Yankee approach today. 
Now if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content. I'll add this to my supplementary procedures playlist and if you have anything you'd like me to cover be sure to add that to the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next live stream very soon. Bye bye for now.